this is Harriet Grayson, your host and producer for Community Culture Showcase. We bring you the best there is in this area about arts and culture, mixing them all together. And I am really honored. I have two guests with me today about uh, an art organization that really helps people in ways you probably have no idea. And we know during COVID, people have been struggling with all kinds of issues. Uh, and some of them have to do with mental illness. Just being stuck, isolation has a real um, difficulty for, for lots of people, young people, old people. You know, you talk about kids not doing well in school because of COVID and they're doing that uh, virtual stuff. Well, a lot of uh, adults, some who may have, in fact, have had um, issues with mental illness in the past, but others where this COVID business just blew the whole thing up. And we're really lucky that within our community, we do have an organization that really reaches out, uses art to work with people with mental illness. And I'm really happy to have them as my guests. So come on in and welcome and see Becca. And Hi. Emma, Emma and I go back a long time over many, many, many organizations. Becca, I just met today for the first time. <laughs> but she's now dear and dear for me in my heart because she does something that is extremely important for the community. So talk about your organization. Um, I talk, Becca is the executive director. Uh, Emma is always going to be the executive director in my mind for everything that she does. <laughs> Our relationship goes back, oh, to the chorus of Westerly. Mm -hmm. So we're talking decades ago. <laughs> Go ahead, Becca. Yeah. Get, tell us a little bit about this ArtReach. Okay, so the history is uh, ArtReach is a nonprofit organization that was formed way back in 1985 as a mental health and arts organization. So it started um, very small with one program called the Second Step Players Theater Troupe. And it was started by someone who had worked at a local mental health agency um, doing recreation, um, and she had chosen theater as her mode. So she was doing theater with people with chronic psychiatric diagnoses as social rehabilitation. So they were just practicing together, building community, learning lines, performing, and educating for healing. And then as time went on, uh, the focus sharpened. So what, in 19, I think 88 it was, the New York Times said, wow, this would be a cool story, even more cool if the theater that you did was all about mental health. Mm -hmm. So at that point, they said, that'll make a good story, let's do that. And the agency shifted focus and started creating original sketch comedy about what it's like to live in America when you have a mental illness. And the information was gathered from people who li had lived experience with mental health issues. And, um, you know, there's an endless source of irony mm. <laughs> in receiving services for mental health care, sadly. And so a lot of our pieces that we wrote way back when are still part of our repertoire today. Wonderful. Uh, wonderful. So that's how we started. Okay. But we've added more arts through the years. So it, right. as you know, jump ahead. Now we also have, we have the theater program still. We have a music program. We do visual arts. Uh, we do writing classes. And we've expanded to uh, include other people who have a sincere desire to participate in the arts in order to support their own mental health. Well, I know that um, Emma has this uh, theater background for years and years and years. I see the uh, license plate is uh, Be Well, which is, I think, the production company. So it's uh, easy to pick out uh, Emma in a parking lot. Just follow that car. It says Be Well. So tell us how you, as a theatrical professional, mm -hmm. got involved with something doing with mental illness. Well, it's funny you bring up Be Well Productions because uh, <laughs> for years, People were saying to me, well, of course you know Becca Atkins because of Art Reach Heals and um, <laughs> the whole slogan, Creativity Heals. And I didn't know it, but people were saying to Becca, well, you must know Emma. <laughs> yep, all the well time. Productions. <laughs> and then finally, like, in 2018 or something, we met at, um, I don't know, like, we hadn't even, like, knowingly crossed paths until, um, until fairly recently. And then, uh, then it was just like, boom, we were <laughs> doing mm. work together in the first uh, work I did at ArtReach was working with Cato McNichol, who's one of our uh, teaching artists, uh, working with members on writing and performing solo pieces. And um, we did an evening of uh, solo theater. Uh, and then I uh, taught an acting class. So that was all kind of freelance. And 
Um, then Beck and I kept talking and we figured out a way for me to kind of come on staff part time to support Becca administratively, uh, nonprofit management and uh, doing theater programs. And then um, in 2019, uh, full time on staff. Great. As associate director, she yeah. really is doing. I'm so lucky. I feel so lucky with all of my staff. <laughs> They're just wonderful. Yeah. And we're just a staff of four. Okay. And what's really unique yeah. is we each have our arts disciplines that we mm -hmm. work in, and we each have our responsibilities administratively. So it's a, it's really a fantastic culture that nurtures us all our own wellness and creativity and artistic um, identity while we're uh, working with others and providing services and running the organization. Do people self-select to visit with you guys, or does someone recommend that they come to you, or with the COVID business and people sort of being isolated, to, can they find you online and they can then say they want, they want to participate? How's the, whole, how's the whole I want to be part of this work? It's a little bit of all of that. Okay. So um, traditionally, people either heard, came to a show and said, that looks like fun, I want to be part of it. So that used to happen when we were performing in public a lot, which hasn't happened yeah. during COVID much. But um, also people are referred through uh, therapists who a lot of our audience members are providers in the mental health system. Okay. So they'll say, hey, I have this client, they might be a good fit. So they'll come through a therapist or a uh, hospital program, a group program when people are you know, hospitalized and they hear someone else in their group talking about it. Mm -hmm. And um, lately, in the last, I don't know, six weeks, I've started getting emails from people who are being referred from other mental health agencies. And we're, we email back and forth and then we try to find a time to meet at the office because we're not in our office all the time right mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll meet with someone in person and we'll look at our calendar of events that we have for our members every month. And it's a matter of plugging it in. Like, what are your interests? What, what do you need? Do you need something with a big commitment? or just a drop-in class, because we have some of both. Right. So we have different levels of participation, and we just try to find the right fit for, for the, each person. So Yeah, and I would just add to that, which is kind of important, is also historically, the majority of funding for ArtReach came from the Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services, mm -hmm. from DEMIS. So um, the organization was serving people who receive services, other services through DEMAS, and that's also where they would get referred to. Our goal has been, since I came on staff, was to diversify that funding, and mm -hmm. ironically, thanks to COVID and a lot of relief support, we have more funding that enables us to work with people just independently that aren't referred through a state agency. So we're at a place now where people can just say, hey, I would really like visual arts, for my own self-care, mm -hmm. um, you know, and we uh, talk with them and uh, if they're a good fit, work them into, you know, set them our calendar so they could sign up for programs. So when you say a good fit, um, I understand there's no children. This is adults 18 only. 18 and over. 18 yes. and over. What else would constitute a good fit? A good fit? Um, I would say a certain amount of mental health recovery under a person's belt, mm -hmm. like the ability to come and uh, work in a room with people um, and enjoy being around people. Whether you're a quiet person, which is fine, or whether you're very interactive, which is fine, but uh, a desire to be there and work on something for your own growth. That, that's really, yeah. and, and, and not in crisis. And not like in we're, crisis. We're not therapeutic, we're psychosocial, right. so um, maybe struggling with managing your mental health or um, you know, wanting to build tools so that when you recognize anxiety or depression is coming that you you know have enough awareness to say oh maybe i'll i'll go draw for an hour right yeah <laughs> and and manage we're going to show a sketch later that will give some other tips but um, <laughs> uh, but not you know we're not a crisis service okay right? yeah or okay. therapy right. All right so you don't consider yeah. yourself therapy no it is therapeutic okay the effect of it is absolutely therapeutic and I do have a, a license, I'm a licensed professional counselor, but no one who's coming to ArtReach is my client. Mm -hmm. I'm not their therapist. Okay. Um, so we're not processing people's issues on site. 
we're hoping that people are getting that type of support in other agencies, that they have an independent therapist or an agency that they're with, and that ArtReach, uh, our programs are a support and enhancement to everything they're using. And it used to be with people diagnosed and in the system, but now, and this has been my, uh, my thing for the last couple of years, all human beings have been in the pressure cooker. Everybody is under mental health stress. That is who we are open to. If you have a sincere desire to be, you know, in the room with a group of people working on a project, an arts project for your healing. Do and you and, go ahead? And what we do uh, in working with our population is um, we're aware of what yes. somebody may be struggling with. Mm -hmm and make accommodations for that. Mm -hmm. Or know, you know, know when somebody needs you to be a little firmer with them about completing their task and knowing when is the time to say, okay, they need a little space. Mm -hmm. So that's what we as staff um, kind of work on yeah. with people, that it, it's a little bit different, say, than being in a um, actual class setting where you have to meet certain goals or standards by certain dates. Okay. Right? Like yeah. we are um, uh, reactive, responsive to what each individual's needs are within the group setting. Flexible and adaptable, but I would also say we keep a high bar. Yeah. So um, if someone has committed to a theater program or a music program that requires three months of rehearsal, <coughs> particularly theater, if you're working with a team, mm -hmm. we do have a standard of if you miss two rehearsals, um, you probably need to move on to a crew position for this particular show. And so we keep the bar high because we don't want to give anyone the impression that you can just, you know, flake it off and come in at the last mm -hmm. minute and do something because it has an impact on your teammates. So there's always that piece of asking people to be really responsible human beings as well. So that is part of the therapeutic mm -hmm. nature too. And sometimes our bar is higher than, say, a therapist who just has a supportive role. And we'll try to help yeah. people achieve that. And if they can't, we'll find something different that is a good fit, that's reasonable, that's still meaningful. Um, and then we also have options yeah. for things that do not have a high bar, for things that are drop-in. So, you, you know, if you're not ready to make that long commitment, it's right. like, well, maybe this would be better for you right now. So that's what I mean by the mm -hmm. right fit. Mm -hmm. Was that okay. clear? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Uh, what happens if you have a sense the person is like falling off the wall, you know, like really falling apart? I mean, is, is, do you have the ability or you don't want the ability to provide uh, some services or send them somewhere or what? Primarily, I would talk to someone okay. and just say, hey, here's what I'm seeing. To um, the person themselves. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. absolutely. You know what? I, th <laughs> I think one thing that makes us a little bit different is that um, simple, clear truth um, is it's a value of our agency. So, you know, I'm not gonna dance around and manipulate somebody into going and getting help. I'm gonna say, hey, here's what I see. It seems as if you're having a hard time, you know, have you considered, you know, calling therapists? And so we'll talk to people. And we also create, I think, a safe space Super within our safe. environment. So sometimes people will just say, hey, I'm having a real bad day, like, I want to be here, but I'm, I may not do anything, right? Or, and that's okay. Um, and, oh, that's and that's okay, okay. with us. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. um, you know, part of it is just having that culture where it's okay to say, or to say, I'm having a bad day. I can't show up today. Um, yeah. Or for us to say, yeah, as Becca says, I notice yeah. this thing. Or, or Becca may come to us if we're running a program and say, hey, keep an eye on so-and-so. Like, um, you know, I want to... I, I saw some things and I wonder if you're yeah. seeing some things so that we can help manage, help them manage what they may be going through. So how many people uh, participate in your, ser in your stuff, in your services? Boy, I haven't looked lately <laughs> to see how many people are active. We usually have between 40 and 70 people uh, on the books. So okay. that would be, you know, people who are coming that we're reporting to the Department of Mental Health that they're coming to something mm -hmm. at our agency. Okay. And some may just be, you know, once uh, a month, once a month yeah. like talking to someone about what they're going to do the next month. <laughs> but most mostly people are coming to a class. A lot a lot of people come to something once a week mm -hmm. or and then a couple people might come to two or especially now that it's virtual. Yeah. Some people 
come Some to, people come three, to things, a lot. three or four things a week because <laughs> okay. they're just turning on their computer and they're desiring that right. um, community with people. Yeah. yeah. Is it possible to have a class that's both live and on Zoom or mm -hmm. yeah? Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so we were, um, and then maybe we want to oh, go into arts. like a, this is perfect. Yeah, so yeah. Um, prior to COVID, end of February 2020, <laughs> mm -hmm. I had been in touch with Pfizer about a donation of laptops because we were already thinking, unbeknownst to us, right. that technology, like providing access to technology would be beneficial for some of our members. And uh, then COVID happened and the laptops were already on their way to us. Oh, good. It was so, perfect. And you can imagine we have a lot of um, program members who some didn't even have internet access. Um, had not used uh, computers. Maybe their only technology was a phone. Some didn't even have a smartphone. So Becca and some staff set up the computers, distributed them, talked to talk people through over the phone, how to use them, how to log on to Zoom. So we pivoted extremely quickly to virtual programs. And then we're gonna show you something about how last summer um, we were uh, started doing outdoors in person. Um, and then, um, you know, from that point forward have kept a hybrid because we recognize the value of virtual programs. Mm -hmm. Um, for some people, some people are able to attend much more and participate much more virtually. Um, others still are like, I'm only coming if it's in person. Right? Okay. <laughs> so. We have the first video that you have that you presented. What, what's the topic on that first video? Do you want to set it up? Or? Uh, it's the it's, it's our peace, peace and nature. peace yeah. and nature art show. Okay. And um, we do have writing groups too. So the the soundtrack for the peace and nature video is a poem that was written in one of our uh, playing with words groups. Okay. We, we sometimes call it poetry group for short, but really it's playing with words. We do lots of different kinds of writing in there, and this was a uh, created in outdoor spaces. Yeah. Um, so that we could get back together safely, right. but also so we could be in nature for because it's really healing. Mm -hmm. This uh, show has traveled some of it. We can talk about that part after, I yeah. think. But, but yeah, so the roll the, the video, yeah. as they would say in Hollywood. And you'll see at the end photos of people creating the work. Yes, too. oh, yeah. Thanks, yeah. I Wish by Robin Fleming. I wish I knew the name of that tree, full of pale pink flowers and yesterday bumblebees. Cool breeze on a warm spring day, pink snow drifts and more petals falling, full of pale pink flowers and yesterday bumblebees. Birds calling to one another, pink snow drifts and more petals falling. Silence for a moment, birds calling to one another. Inside, paper and pens, silence for a moment. Writing down memories, inside, paper and pens. Cool breeze on a warm spring day, writing down memories. I wish I knew the name of that tree. So tell us what we just saw. So uh, that was our uh, on plein air um, summer sessions. Uh, you saw some photos we were discussing um, at Harkness, uh, Avery Point. Um, we also went to Mohegan Park and out at the airport, Groton New London Airport, because um, we were creating this work to be in a fall art show uh, or Art at the Airport, a program that the Groton New London Airport does in collaboration with the Southeastern Connecticut Cultural Coalition. Okay. So um, we were uh, creating massive amounts of, <laughs> uh, and we, uh, Faith, our, uh, our teacher, uh, focused on land, sea, and air. 
um, as uh, different themes each mm -hmm. week. And then uh, she worked on framing and hanging uh, the show, which hung at the airport for close to three months, I think. Wow, okay. And um, we weren't sure, but we were able to have a, a walkthrough opening event, which our a jazz band played at also. Oh, cool. Um, and part of the art at the airport is to collaborate in the community. So Groton Public Library is also a partner in that. So we did, um, we also did a virtual gallery talk. Uh, we did a uh, we had some more artwork on display at Grand Public Library in the cases. We did, we, did uh, Stir Crazy. we showed a sketch comedy show called Stir Crazy Comedy from the Pandemic. So we did a couple, did we do a poetry? We did a virtual poetry event. Yes, we did yes. a virtual poetry So event. we really maximized right. um, uh, ancillary programs in conjunction with the art exhibit. And then following the art exhibit, we moved some of the artwork up to Otis Library in Norwich on display for a mm -hmm. month and then down to Public Library of New London uh, on display there. So it's, And where it, is it now sitting? Now it's taking a little break. Oh, <laughs> because piece, piece we, of nature is not up anywhere right now? Because <laughs> we just swapped it out at New London with some new, um, right. actually, nature and themed artwork too. But um, Because, yeah. you know, the, uh, the studio puts on, or did before COVID, mm -hmm. Put on used to put on two to three art shows every yeah. year. Mm -hmm. I think Emma probably uh, yeah. actually saw some of them. You know, we, we are um, run by two wonderful Italian guys. So when you have an art mm -hmm. show, you got to have great food. So we had fabulous food, a little vino, a little music, and local artists. So I mean, nice. you might consider, yeah. depending on what's going on with COVID, because we've yeah. been a little shaky about doing yeah. anything. Sure. Um, too much into the future because who knows what's going to happen. But this could be uh, a reasonable venue. We we hope, mm -hmm. who knows what, uh, to have a Christmas show. We wanted to mm -hmm. have a summer show. We That dashed with the rising numbers. We decided against that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so think about us yeah. um, because okay. we move out all the cameras. Of course, the lights we don't. And we have... Big tables of food and art all over you. You and I, we all sat in the conference room. Mm -hmm. That place is filled with art. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, we've traditionally only had, had um, uh, art, not sculpture, mm -hmm. and, and no crafts or anything like that. It was mm -hmm. just um, painting well, yeah. or watercolor or char you know, charcoal, mm -hmm. whatever. You, the medium is, is fine yeah. all over this uh, place. And it really, we have nice white walls. That sounds and, great. Uh, yeah. The Franks were masters at hanging um, paintings. Mm -hmm. They really know how to do cool. it. Yeah. So, again, you might want to think about uh, having a show here. Nice. Yeah, or, we love you know, that. I'm thinking, so it may be a good intro for our, our next video. We have a number of people who work with us in, in different formats. So, we. We do these big group art shows, like the piece of nature that you saw, but we also have some individual artists, and we're hoping to do so much more of this as we move into the future, um, who do who one artist featured in a show. Mm -hmm. So there is someone who works with us who, on the side, uh, does pottery. She's very interested in pottery. But then at ArtReach, she's done painting. Mm -hmm. She's done all kinds of crafts. She's done poetry, gorgeous poetry, mm -hmm. and she's a singer, <laughs> so she, and she's an actor. Yeah, she's so an actor. she really participates in almost everything that we do. But we were able to, uh, another local agency, Reliance Health, um, hosted an art show of hers. And um, we have a, a video of that that we have used with, with her poetry, describing her pottery process and showing some items from her individual show. So in the future, we'll have yeah. individual and group shows. Okay. Arts All right. in different yeah. mediums. So, so we adapted these videos for uh, what we were doing, kind of open mic style community share events where virtually. members were invited to share their work with the public through a virtual event of, you know, multi-disciplines. Right. And so we put together this showing, um, highlighting both Barbara's uh, artwork and poetry. And that's, you will, we'll see that's the video? video? Yes. Yeah. All right. We'll get the video. Right. Ah, there here you we go. go. Pottery by Barbara Stanley. Clay caressing, kneading, pressing. Pots lined up on drying shelf. Shaping, smoothing, oh so soothing. 
helping heal my mental health. Stretching, pulling, rolling slabs, I throw my clay upon the wheel. There is no other craft I know like pottery to make me feel. So tell us, who is Barbara Stanley and how did she come to you? Gosh, I'm trying to remember how She's Barbara came. She's been a came. member for a long time. She has. Right? She's yeah. been a member for a long time. I think she probably came in through the uh, singing doorway, but it could have been acting. Um, She's a wonderful singer, and we do a coffee house production. So we have a music program. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I believe that she came in, in our co coffee house, as we call it, we have a music director, we have two volunteer bands, three-month project, and uh, our members choose one song and come to one rehearsal a week. Like We have two nights, so we split them up between the two bands. They choose a song, we work it up with the band. Usually there's art going on in the other room at the same time while okay. people are rehearsing. Right. And at the end of that, we, um, in one of the local theaters like... Uh, Chestnut Street Playhouse or um, the Donald Oat Theater, that's part oh, of yeah, the Norwich Arts yep, Center, yep, yep. Um, we'll, ha we'll have a big show, a big community show where everybody mm -hmm. sings with the bands and we just have a blast. Um, so Barbara's a wonderful singer. I believe she started there. Then she started acting with us and coming to mm -hmm. classes. Um, one mm -hmm. by one, we discovered all of her multi-talents. <laughs> wow, that's, that's, that's yeah. great. And um, I mean... Talk, talk about multi-talented. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You bet. All, yeah. The only thing missing is dancing. Mm -hmm. And she probably <laughs> could see, dance. I haven't seen her dance yet, but maybe I better try. We could do that in the Thrill the World event yeah. this year. Yeah. <laughs> so do you remember how she came to you? She just she just walked in? Did somebody recommend it? I mean, how to, I'm only because I'm trying mm -hmm. to get a sense of, you know, how do people find you? And then mm -hmm. how do you then take someone like a Barbara yeah. Stanley right. and sort of mold that person, mm -hmm. taking advantage of all of her many talents, which you learn about through interaction with her. Mm -hmm. She didn't yeah. present herself and say, right. oh, mm -hmm. I'm an actress, I'm a singer, mm -hmm. I can do poetry, I can do pottery. I mean, it's like going through the alphabet. So she had, still wouldn't say any of those things. We see it. Okay. I don't know okay. if she does. But she did a show, so she must <laughs> oh, she has, right? Yes, I mean, yes. she's stepping more into the fullness of her artistry. Yeah. I believe that she, that she was referred to us through a service provider. Okay. Um, and do you get a sense, I'm just curious, do you get a sense that she's become, and I'm only using her because this is the person mm -hmm. we have, that, that her ability to control her mental illness is in fact in some way better because of her participation in all of these things? Is, has she been able to then open up more because you know, she, go, she went from singer to musician to pottery to poetry? As she goes through these steps, is she herself feeling more liberated, more at ease, um, especially during this COVID you know, stuff where we have no yeah. control over our life? I believe so. Do you so. get a sense yeah. of that? Well, yeah. Does she get a um, sense of that? It's the... Um being part of a community, and she's somebody who feels very responsible about the community, right? Mm -hmm. When there's a new person, welcoming them in, mm -hmm. telling because them. Because that's what was done for her. Right, and, and, tell, it and kind of saying like, oh, this is, you might like, she, she'll be the advocate who says, oh, you're here at art today, but you might want to come to writing mm -hmm. group because, you know, yeah. or, and I'll be there and, um, really welcoming other people because the community has meant so much to her yeah. and um, being validated in her work, um, I think, um, helps build her 
confidence. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, yeah. I have definitely seen her confidence grow, her ease at trying some of the new things, you okay. know, that she feels like she's not good at, mm -hmm. but um, being able to be more forgiving with herself, you know, you have to experiment with stuff before you get mm -hmm. good at it. Mm -hmm. And so I've seen her reach for, challenge herself more. And mm -hmm. um, that happens for people all the time. I've seen such beautiful growth among people who've come into our agency. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they just come out of their shell. And even, you know, even introverts thrive. Actually, we have a lot of introverts. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of people who have anxiety disorders who do theater. I mean, that's kind of astonishing. When you, or sing in front of people, mm -hmm. which is one of the scariest things. Right. So yeah. audiences come, they see somebody who is quaking in their boots in front of a microphone, but because of the support of the people around them that they're taking in, and we practice that, mm -hmm. take in the support that's available, right. they're able to do it. And then you're so proud of yourself after. It's never as scary as mm -hmm. the first time. Right. Mm -hmm. So people stay. They try again. They'll challenge themselves a little yeah. more. Yeah. You know, there are professional actors and, and performers who often tell you, mm -hmm. um, if they're interviewed, about how anxiety provoking it is to yes. be mm -hmm. a, an actor or, or a musician or yes. even a poet mm -hmm. or someone where you're in front of an audience yeah. and somehow this kind of community gives right. people the kind right. of support they need and the, and the self of self confidence in order to um, address an audience mm -hmm. and I suspect I mean I don't know that that would have a really positive impact on their whole mental illness yes. uh, diagnosis become less anxious mm -hmm. Um, maybe more, uh, even for an introvert, maybe a little bit more out, mm -hmm. out, out, out in the community mm -hmm. um, and maybe try more things. So you said, well, I'm an introvert by nature, <laughs> so it's been, it worked on me. That's why I'm still here. I'm not kidding. When I came, my first diagnosis years ago, years ago was agoraphobia, basically a fear of everything outside of your own. And I was supported at ArtReach so much that I started inviting myself to go on tour. Like, can I come help? I started as maybe their most enthusiastic, well, they still had other enthusiastic <laughs> volunteers. I was a very enthusiastic volunteer. And I came in with something they didn't have, which was I majored in dance in college. Oh. And they needed a dance person and somebody who knew how to do graphics on a Macintosh computer. And I had both of those things. <laughs> so it, you know, it's my, it was my first full-time job. It's been my full-time job since 1993. Yeah. But because of how it worked with me, I'm really conscious of how it works for other people. Mm -hmm. And it's different for different people. I would imagine based mm -hmm. on their mental health uh, illness. Yes, absolutely. That it's going to certainly be, be different. But mm -hmm. I would think if you start to, I mean, the whole idea of creativity yes. is one that mm -hmm. opens up your mind. And theoretically, the, some of the most creative people in the world over the history of mankind had been, we would call, unquote, quote, crazy. So it, it sort of, uh, creativity allows the other population to say, oh, well, they're a creative person, they can be a little nutty. It's, it's what we commonly think is part of the creative process. You, mm -hmm. you are a little nutty. Uh, may not be true, but that's the, that's the, well, yeah, that's that's the it, sense, you know? Yeah. It's a big However, risk to create right. something from nothing. There's right. there's such a thing as creative anxiety, yeah. and you know all yeah. create all creatives who are good have some creative anxiety. <laughs> you right. know, you're starting with a blank page yeah. or a blank canvas, right? And what right. are you make it, do right. with it? Right. Right. Yeah. Um, but what's important at ArtReach is that respect and kindness yes. is a part of that. Whereas I think in that traditional idea of the crazy artist, there's a lot of perhaps abuse and misogyny and toxic behavior, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that's, right. Um, and that's the part I think when we say, what's a good fit? That's not right. okay. acceptable. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good opportunity too to talk about um, what we saw during COVID and virtual programs was members really taking risks. We've had a couple people who maybe have only done uh, kind of more individual things like writing or, or visual art, say, I'll take a stab at acting, <laughs> right? And, um, you know, when we first got those computers in March of 2020 and started to teach people how to use them and how to go on Zoom and uh, the mechanics of cameras on and audio on and off and um, 
how to set up your space to be prepared for that. By August of 2020, we had auditions for, we were planning a virtual sketch comedy show. I'm leading up to the next video. Okay, (laughs) yes, I hear you. Um, And uh, we had auditions virtually, a group audition virtually. And after the audition, it occurred to me, wow, that went off without any technical glitches. Everybody felt comfortable participating in a group online audition and everybody knew how to manage it. And it occurred to me, we wouldn't have been able to do this three months ago, let alone Mm-mm. six months ago. So the learning curve was huge. So that yeah. everybody was prepared at that point to be cast and rehearse and act in these virtual sketches wow. that we wrote called right. Stir Crazy Comedy from the Pandemic. And so we um, live streamed that in January of 2021. Um, we thought it would have a pretty shelf, short shelf life with COVID nearing the end. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, we've actually um, <laughs> rebroadcast uh, Stir Crazy, uh, both online, and we have presented it in person. I think at Groton Public Library was our first time when we went, oh, we can actually hear people laugh because you don't get that <laughs> right, when you're right? <laughs> doing it virtually. Um, and uh, we presented at a national conference about how we, uh, the National Organization for Arts and Health, we presented a session about how we pulled it all together, shared some of the work uh, on it, and uh, we brought one sketch to share with you today. All right, so we're going to see this sketch Miss now. Cranky Pants. Miss? Miss Cranky Pants. Advice Miss column. Cranky, oh, uh, a, a gossip, not a gossip, a advice, advice, advice column. columnist. Right, right. Yeah. Hello everyone, welcome to the latest episode of Miss Cranky Pants. I started this podcast at the beginning of the pandemic as my little way of doing something to help my fellow self-quarantiners. We're all in this together, and even though I intend to help, I find that due to this pandemic, I have become a Miss Cranky Pants nearly all the time. Miss Cranky Pants reared her ugly head for the first time just before the end of March. And for once, I don't feel alone or ashamed because everyone living through the pandemic is equally susceptible to being a Cranky Pants. Thank you for joining me on YouTube. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel. Oh, on the plus side, isolation has been good for my anger management issues. You can't get in a fight if you never see anybody. And I haven't worn real shoes in three months. But I digress. Our first letter today is from Alone in Alabama. Isn't it cute? Alone writes, Dear Miss Cranky Pants, I am a single 53-year-old male living alone in an apartment. I don't even have a cat or plants. I am all alone. He wrote that in all caps, see? I am all alone. (sighs) Ah, here we are. While I feel very fortunate that I haven't lost my job, I can work from home and I have plenty of toilet paper and flour and I don't know anyone who is ill from the COVID-19, I find that I'm filled with anxiety and jump out of my skin at the slightest thing. Even though I have absolutely no contact with any other living human being, I I worry constantly that I might catch the virus. I know this is irrational, but what if it really can live a long time on metal surfaces? I put my trash out in the middle of the night when no one else is likely to be awake and there's a metal door handle signed Alone in Alabama. Alone you aren't. I am here for you. And our Patreon supporters are here for you too. Self-isolation is a marathon, not a sprint. It's important to have coping techniques that will help see you through however long we will be spending increased amounts of time at home and alone. First of all, face your emotions. Name them. Happy, sad, confused, angry, 
You may also be grieving things that are lost forever, like the hope of ever dating another human being in person, or hugging your friend when you run into them in the supermarket, or celebrating your aunt's 80th birthday by skydiving. It's okay. We're all experiencing loss. Just breathe. Breathing techniques will go a long way towards helping you remain calm and anxiety-free. Inhale. Exhale. You can also practice self-care by taking walks in nature, listening to calming music, or eating a half gallon of double fudge chunk. These are extraordinary times. If there was ever a time to justify eating ice cream every day, this is it. Oh, that reminds me of a tip I want to share. Thanks to self-isolation, I have learned that you can put an entire package of Oreos in a blender. Add a little milk, a few ice cubes, and voila, you have a beverage that will last through a night of binge watching the good place. Miss Cranky Pants knows that when you blend something, the calories escape as the sugar molecules break up. Don't have to ask Dr. Fauci. You can trust me on this one. <laughs> well, that looked like fun. It was fun. Okay, can I say a couple of things about that? All right. Okay. So this project that you just saw was a piece of a... When the pandemic hit, we did not know how we were gonna continue the Second Step Players Theater Troupe during the pandemic. Because live theater, live sketch comedy, and that's been our primary program and part of our focus for since the beginning of Artreach. Um, because part of what we do through the theater is deliver a message and reduce the stigma, you know, the negative stereotyping about people who have mental health issues. Mm -hmm. And so we, <laughs> You know, we put on our thinking caps and we're like, how are we going to do this? Let's make a Second Step player show virtually. And uh, we had gotten computers in people's hands, as Emma mentioned. And uh, we wrote material that was going to be filmed more like a movie than for stage. So this is out of all of our wheelhouse, but we did it anyway. Mm -hmm. And because everybody was learning on the fly. Right. Our members had to learn very quickly how to uh, mute microphones in Zoom, how to um, you know, walk in and out of the frame, how to know where to look, because they're acting on camera. And um, so they got used to their computers, which means now they can go to a doctor's appointment easily, <laughs> uh, virtually, and they're very important skills. Computer skills really save yeah, your we life. We had uh, one member who went, decided to apply to go back to school. Yeah, right. um, yeah. Because they had a year of working virtually with mm -hmm. ArtReach. I was excited out of my mind yeah. when people started not only uh, using computers, but doing Zoom and also even discovering the internet because many people had not. It's like the world is available to you. Mm -hmm. So one of the first things we did, like literally the week after the shutdown was together on Zoom, took a Coursera class. Do you know Coursera? It's online learning okay. that's free yeah. and that's okay. available to everyone. Uh -huh. And there was a course that's out of Yale that's on this platform uh, called, what was it called? The Science of Happiness? Yeah, that sounds right. The Science right. of Happiness. Yeah. So we're like, well, we could all use this right now. <laughs> yeah. So staff and members together, mm -hmm. and it was an opportunity you know, for me. I'm like, let's teach people to use Coursera classes. They can learn anything. You can actually get a degree through mm -hmm. Coursera. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was excited about opening up the world to our members mm -hmm. because they're smart, they're capable, they're funny. They yeah. deserve all of this, and they have a lot more, access to a lot more now yeah. because of the pandemic, believe it or not. Oh, Weird little yeah. side absolutely, effect. Absolutely. I mean, I can tell you lots of uh, organizations who I work with or know about, and they'll tell you that uh, before, before the pandemic, you'd have maybe 20 people show for a meeting. Now with Zoom or some other platform mm -hmm. like that, you can have 40, 50 people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing mm -hmm. yeah. how things have changed because of the very fact that it, it has, um, there's ex it's, a, it's, it's accessible. 
but also it's relatively simple. Now, I am a, um, a Luddite, so you know what a Luddite is, right? <laughs> so I just hate technology. I mean, uh, I have a smartphone. God knows what I do with it. Nothing. <laughs> but um, but I, could, I could master Zoom because it yeah. it's a pretty, yeah. if mm -hmm. I could do it. But Anyone doing theater do on Zoom is not as easy as you think. Oh, <laughs> oh maybe so. It's, maybe it's so. really not. Um, yes, yes. So we had a, a kind of think through what props do people need. Uh, Corinne Esty, who uh, is our events coordinator, and she and I produced, uh, co-produced and co-directed um, Stir Crazy and co-wrote it, I should say. Um, uh, you know, we went through all the props, which actors needed which props, who didn't have an adequ adequate lighting, who, who maybe needed a microphone. And we had little bags that got driven around and <laughs> dropped off with everybody. And then we had a session where we told them, here's what's in your bag. Like, here's what you do okay, with it. Okay, we're rehearsing this on Tuesday. You'll need those props on Tuesday. Um, you know, when we were getting ready to record, uh, you know, setting up each person's video, make sh adjusting their lighting, a lot of back and forth tweaking because left and right. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, like it's very confusing. We need more light on the side of your face. That's where the book is, you know. Right. I mean, it's right. Like, you know, um, and adjusting where the camera is sitting, how far, right? So it's very, but you're not together in the room. So, uh, but it was a really great experience. Mm -hmm. And also to create that. So we recorded the sketches ahead of time uh, so that there wouldn't be the anxiety or perhaps last minute technical issues. So the sketches mm -hmm. were recorded ahead of time and then they were live streamed with Becca doing as she would in a live show, introducing each sketch and doing a little follow up afterwards. Um, so we sent, we also did a opening night bag for each member and uh, sent those to drop those off at everybody's house. So we had kind of a virtual cast party. And one thing that we also realized midway in the process was that people would be missing a curtain call. So Corinne and I <laughs> spent two days. <laughs> we went to everybody's home. You know, we said, okay, we're going to get to your house about 1115. <laughs> and we're going to have you come out your front door. And we're going to applaud yeah. you. <laughs> and you're going to take a bow. And we had a whole montage at the end. And that was actually um, such a wonderful part of the program because they didn't get to hear any uh, audience response. Uh, other than yeah. Corinne and their neighbors wondering, why are the people outside right? <laughs> cheering? Um, and it's, it's really a cute way to end the yeah. program. That is cute. Yeah, it, is it, cute. Was, it, was so, it was so good. I mean, it, it's been... A challenge, but yeah. we've, we've kept our programs going, and I mean, now we have music going on. Mm -hmm. So right now, we've just been able to start singing again together. Okay. So we have a music mm -hmm. director, Dick Pape, who's a lifelong musician. Mm -hmm. And um, tonight, tonight we're rehearsing <laughs> oh, yeah. so, so. with one of the bands. So we'll have, you know, about, I think, eight vocalists tonight in one of the bands to start working together. So we have the two things. We have a jazz group and then the larger music thing. But music was hazardous during the pandemic. Oh, yes. Yeah. <sighs> right? So we're still wearing masks at rehearsals. Oh, and okay. even though everybody okay. who's coming is um, vaccinated and boosted, um, and we're using individual microphone covers when people sing on the mic. They're one one use disposable, um, but you know we need it right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and ideally that will be performed live in a theater in yes. the fall. So. Yes. <laughs> and so that's in, our goal to be back. Yeah. And just uh, in June 21st we have an event coming up at Art Beach called Make Music Day. It's an international event. Our jazz band will be playing and we'll be having a participatory percussion class at noon. So the jazz band plays at 11 on June 21st. The participatory percussion is at 12. And Jacob Graham is from String Theory. He is teaching that. So anybody can come and play Where percussion. Is it gonna be? It's going to be outside of our offices, which are off Route 32 in Norwich on the Uncas on Thames campus. So uh, when you pull onto the Uncas on Thames campus off Route 32, we're the first building on the left. And we're intending to be playing outside, but there'll be a Make Music Day sign to mark <laughs> where we are. Yeah, so okay. 401 West Thames Street in yes. Norwich if you're putting in a GPS. But you can also uh, look on our social media at Art Reach Heels on Facebook or Instagram and 
we'll be posting leading up. Yeah. And if weather website. looks iffy that day, we'll be on social media updating people where to find yes. us. Okay, yeah. for right, sure. Good. Good. Yeah. Um, do we want? Do we have time to get a little clip of the jazz group? Uh, uh, oh we yeah, the music. Yeah, yeah so sure. we do. Let's have, hear the, the your jazz band. Yeah, this happens every Friday at Art Reach. We just get together and practice. We play songs out of the jazz real books to uh, keep our chops up. Good. Wonderful. Mm. Wonderful. Let here we go. Well, that is uh, great about, uh, about the music. I was saying off camera before that music is a very healing kind of uh, thing, uh, not only, uh, certainly among musicians, but composers, but even audiences. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can really learn to, to love music and when you can hear it live uh, or mm -hmm. substitute it live on Zoom. <laughs> It's uh, it is uh, a great uh, it just makes you feel good. Tell yeah. us a little bit about your little jazz group there. Uh, so our jazz group practices every Friday, and um, we're practicing at an intermediate advanced level in that one. Mm -hmm. So we play out of the they call them the uh, real book. <laughs> we just we look at the chord sheets. We play the you know we just pick songs and go around in that way that the musicians get to practice playing solos. Right and. Um, you know, really stretch out and practice their chops and improve. And um, it's it's been a very good thing. We've actually been meeting for like yeah. nine years now. Wow. But they've um, and we played play. at some art openings. Yes. Okay. They played at the Art at the Airport opening. Right. And when our master teaching artist had a gallery show, the, she invited the jazz band to play yeah. at our opening reception. Well, if you come so here and do available. an art show here, you know, yeah. you can bring your jazz band cool. and, you know, we can yeah. sit right yeah. here in this corner and... We've, yeah. we've also, some. we've played like when we have uh, the, when we have stand-up comedy shows, mm -hmm. you know how on like the late night comedy shows, they have the house band. We've We've been the house band and like played when people come on and off the stage. People picked little clips of songs. Right. So we played them on and off the stage. Wow. So we, we yeah. get around. And we're hoping actually to play at some assisted living facilities. We've been invited oh. to play at one. And so we're going into mm -hmm. some new directions so that we can get out there. Yeah. That is, uh, that is wonderful. So just to uh, kind of put it all in perspective, what do you, what's your message to my, to my audience here about this organization that's been in existence for 35 years <laughs> and most people never heard of you? So, yeah. yeah. So well, what do you want to tell, what do you want to tell the public about you and how to get to you? Okay. About us, creativity heals. Mm -hmm. um, and particularly with, with mental health, it can help people be stable, uh, build community with each other. Just the simple connection and act of being with a group of kind and supportive people makes a big difference. Um, 
So, so that's yeah. important. So if you want to join in an art program or come and see one of our art shows or performances, uh, you can see our calendar at artreachheels.com. Uh, dot org, org, sorry, yeah. artreachheels.org. Uh, and on all social media, we're at, at Artreach Heels, Facebook, Instagram, and, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can yeah. see some of our, or you could see Miss Cranky Pants episode two and some mm -hmm. other comedy and other poetry programs all on our YouTube channel. So all you have to do is um, be an adult over 18. Mm -hmm. Do you have to come with a some kind of uh, acknowledgement of your mental illness or, you know, Not how anymore. does that quite, no, okay. Not anymore. Okay. Because we've, you know, uh, we've been really working to get other sources of funding okay. so that we can include, um, so that we can provide service to, to anyone who wants to support their life and mental health through the arts. So they, as we know, COVID's been a, uh, a mind crusher. Yes. Mm. So people who just, who may not have been feel, being mentally ill three, four years ago, but now being stuck in their house right. um, for the last two years, feeling extremely anxious, this is an opportunity to yeah. slowly yes. get out and to- Or even to just people. feeling, I need something. I need something to be my go-to when right? I don't know what, I've been in the house all day, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Like that could be a jigsaw puzzle, but it could be drawing it could be right. uh writing a poem right yeah. so or, or just getting with a group for an hour to participate in an art activity and and, and our programs are free okay oh, that's very yeah. important mm -hmm. uh, great great that's because great. of funding okay yeah. that's wonderful so we we're happy that you came on board and uh, i'm very glad that we had an opportunity to talk about a wonderful organization that is a credit to the community which may or may not, it's completely invisible to me. I, until, <laughs> except for Emma, knowing Emma, I wouldn't have known this at all. So I'm glad you're here. Um, I just want to take a couple of moments and tell you that among my many things is I, not only do I write, but I also teach creative writing. I've got a class going on at the uh, Pawkatuck Neighborhood Center. It is also free. So it's at 11 o'clock on Wednesdays. Every Wednesday we meet. I won't complicate it by telling you there's an exception to this rule. But uh, you can contact me at Har you know, Harriet, Grace and Harriet at gmail.com. Uh, or if you had to, you can go, um, you know, you could call the studio. They can get in touch with me. I'm looking for people who want to write. You don't have to be a, a writer. The whole idea is, in my mind, is you just want to be a little creative. You want to write something for your children or your grandchildren or whatever to uh, tell them about your life story. You want to uh, relive a, uh, some kind of event in your life. I have uh, one of my people had a rather uh, eventful but tragic life and she wants to put it on paper. And so we encourage people. I encourage people to read really, to read really good stuff. I mean, read the classics, read the people who have uh, received those uh, Nobel Prizes and Pulitzer Prizes to get a sense. I, I give out homework, nobody does it, I don't care. I just want <laughs> you to come and to write. And that's my message, because it's always good to write. Maybe you'll learn how to write greeting cards. I don't care. Um, you'll just have some fun. So I'm Harriet Grayson. I am the host and producer of Community Culture Showcase. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for Artreach and all of the wonderful things you do. And you know, come on board and come to my creative writing class. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful time and stay safe.